Welcome to our second uh, topic that is uh, diodes and uh, diode application. Um, in this topic, we are going to discuss about um, an electronic device we call a diode. And um, we are going also to look at one of the application one of the applications of um, a diode, which is rectification. So um, in terms of construction, um, a diode is uh, made of um, a semiconductor material, which is doped in a manner that one half of that piece of semiconductor is doped with um, pentavalent impurity atoms so that it becomes p-type um, semiconductor and the other half is doped with um, sorry the pentavalent uh, impurity um, uh, semiconductor makes the resultant um, uh, semicon semiconductor N type um, um, semiconductor material because it introduces um, extra free electrons into the semiconductor. And the other half is doped with trivalent impurity atoms so that um, that half becomes a P type semiconductor and uh, it introduces um, extra O's in the semiconductor. So when the doping um, is done, um, the boundary between the two regions, between the P region and the uh, N region, is called the PN junction. And uh, the region that is immediately after um, the PN junction is referred to as the depression region. Uh, the reason why it is called depletion region is because um, in that region, there are um, no free changes that uh, exist there unless the diode is uh, biased with um, a voltage um, signal. That's only when the charge carriers, which are free electrons or O's, can move to that region. Now, that diagram just shows you how the diode is constructed, shows you the basic structure. But this other uh, diagram shows you the schematic symbol of a diode. And uh, we need to say that a diode is a um, two terminal device. One terminal is referred as the anode terminal and the other terminal is referred as the cathode terminal. The anode terminal is the terminal that is um, adjacent to the P region, and the cathode uh, terminal is adjacent to the N region. Now, um, these are uh, and a commonly used diode we refer to as rectifier diode is the most common uh, type of diode in electronics uh, circuits. And uh, its image looks like that. And um, now you, you can see uh, in that, the two terminals of uh, that diode, the anode and the cathode, and the question arises, how do you, dif how do you dif um, differentiate between the anode and the cathode terminal? Of course, um, a very easy way of doing that would be to look at that diode and you'll see towards the cathode side, there is um, a, a current band, which is um, um, whitish or um, silvery. Um, so that side where the, that column band is, is next to the cathode. So the other, the opposite side is the anode. And that is how you can easily um, identify uh, the two terminals of um, electrifier diode. 
Of course, um, there are other types of dions. We call them special dions, um, which play in different um, roles. And uh, we will look at some of them at some point in our course. Um, but um, the point to note here is um, there are different types of dions. In this uh, topic, we will restrict ourselves to rectifier and diode. Or electrifier and diode is commonly defined as a diode. Right? If, if you hear um, people talking of a diode, they are talking of electrifier and diode. But there are other special types of diodes, such as right emitting diode, photon diode, laser diode, etc. We will look at some of them at some point. Now, um, when we talk of a diode, um, we need to um, mention that a diode can be operated in two ways or in two modes. Um, there is what we call the forward bias mode, and there is what we call the reverse bias mode. In forward bias mode, um, the diode, um, if you if you bias the diode in forward bias, uh, it allows current to pass through it. And so um, current can pass through the diode. Um, and how you bias it is if you bring a voltage a source or, or a bias voltage, and connect it in a way that the positive terminal of your voltage source is connected to once the P range on, and the negative terminal of your voltage source is connected to once the N region. Or put differently, you connect the anode of the diode to the positive terminal of your voltage source and you connect the cathode terminal to the uh, negative terminal of your voltage source. So, and you ensure that the voltage source is uh, above a certain threshold. Eh? Um, for most diodes, the threshold that you would want uh, your voltage source to be above is 0 0.7 volts. Um, then that way, current is able to flow through the diode. Um, you also want to put a resistor um, across that circuit. Um, and the reason why you want to put a resistor is to kind of control the amount of current flowing uh, through the circuit. Um, because if you have too much current flowing through uh, the, the diode, you might uh, damage it. So, and, and also you don't want to dissipate a lot of unnecessary power. Uh, so you um, want um, current, you, if you want, to, you want to put that resistor there to control the amount of current flowing through the diode. Now, um, the, the diagram on the right hand side shows the schematic dia the schem schematic di diagram of a forward biased diode. Um, as you can see, the positive terminal of your voltage source goes, of course, through the resistor to the anode, and the negative terminal of the voltage source goes to the cathode. So that's the schematic diagram, and that way. A current is able to flow through the, the diode. And, and that current that flows through the diode when the diode is, um, is, uh, is uh, forward biased is, is referred to as the forward uh, current. It's referred to as the forward current. Um, some characteristics about um, a forward biased car uh, diode. Uh, we have something we call current voltage curves. And uh, um, if, if, if you want to study the behavior of the forward current, 
against uh, forward voltage, that is the voltage across the diode. When um, a diode is forward biased, what you do is you set up a circuit like uh, the one shown on the right, where you have a diode and uh, you, you, you put a multimeter or a voltmeter vote across the two terminals of the diode. You also want to measure current so you can bring in um, another meter to measure the current. And uh, again, connect the circuit in a manner that it is going to forward bias the, the diode. And uh, your voltage source should be your voltage source should be variable, so that you can start varying the voltage from zero in very small steps, and observe the voltage across the diode and the current passing through the diode. So if you perform that experiment for very small steps of voltage change um, so that you are able to monitor small incremental steps of voltage, um, vo voltage across the diode and the uh, current, what you end up with is a graph like the one shown there. And that graph tells you something. That graph tells you current um, through the diode increases very slightly as you increase the voltage until you reach a certain threshold voltage, per which, which in this case is 0 0.7 volts. Past that, once you increase the voltage past that uh, value, then what you realize is current suddenly increases. So currents, current increases more than the voltage is increasing. Um, so that is the threshold we say um, is necessary uh, to be um, extended for the diode to be forward biased. So if you want to forward bias a diode, besides connecting it in, in the way that the positive terminal is, to, is connected towards the uh, anode, Sign of the diode and uh, the negative terminal is connected to once the cathode side of the diode. You also want to ensure that you have, your supply voltage yeah, is greater than that threshold, which is 0 0.7. Because it is at that uh, point, actually, the diode becomes forward biased. And, and, and that circuit just shows you um, that um, once you your voltage uh, supply, um, once the the the, the voltage um, supply exceeds that, eh, further increment of voltage supply will lead to very small change of diode voltage. Um, you will need to very small change in diode uh, voltage. Um, much as you are increasing the supply voltage. Um, so um, now let's, uh, uh, there's uh, something uh, we need to take note of about uh, the depletion region of a diode when you forward bias it. What happens to the depletion region? When you forward bias a diode, the depression region um, narrows, narrows so that it becomes smaller. Um, and what makes it to narrow down? Um, you can see that when you forward bias and ion, you what are you doing? You are connecting the positive terminal uh, to the what? to the P region, to the P region and the negative terminal of the battery to once the end region. So using the row of charges, like charges attract and um, 
uh, unrike changes, right, right changes repel and unrike changes attract. So what would happen is um, because your negative uh, terminal of the voltage source is towards the N region, and remember N region has got free uh, free electrons as the majority charge carriers, and the P region has got O's as the majority charge carriers. So the free electrons in the N region are pushed towards the PN junction um, because they are being repelled by the negative um, by, by the negative changes in the negative terminal of the battery. So they move towards the depletion region. And as they move towards the depletion region, they narrow, they narrow that region. Remember, depletion region is the region with no charge carriers. But as these changes move towards um, uh, uh, the depletion region, they narrow that region, so it becomes narrower. And um, of course, they, if, if, if your voltage source, um, the value exceeds the, 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 the threshold region that we will, we, we, we will call from this point, the barrier potential, so if you are um, voltage source exceeds the barrier potential, then um, the, 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 the free electrons will cross, will cross the PN junction and go to the P region. By closing that depletion region, electrons will have uh, spent a lot of energy so that their energies will have dropped and so the Noronga will be able to be in the conduction band, but they will fall to the valency band where they combine with the O's in the P region. And again, that action um, serves to narrow down, um, to narrow down the depletion region. So the take home point from this trend is that um, the amount of energy uh, required to move an electron from N region to the P region is what we are calling the barrier potential. It's the barrier potential. And you need to have um, your voltage source um, exceed that value for the diode to be forward biased. And if that happens, then the depletion region of the diode uh, narrows down. Um, the next mode, the next mode uh, you can bias an, a diode is in the reverse bias mode. So I remember I said there are two ways you can operate a diode. You can operate it in forward bias, but you can also operate it in reverse bias mode. Now in uh, reverse bias mode, eh, um, you, you, you literally, well, you, for practical purposes, we can say if you bias a diode in a reverse bias mode, no current flows through it. No current flows through it. But if we wanted to be very exact, eh, we would say that um, this very little current which flows through the diode when it is a reverse bias, very little current, such that uh, you can consider it to be negligible. So that's that's a um, uh, reverse bias mode. And how do you reverse bias a diode? You do that by connecting the negative terminal of the voltage source to once the the unknown signed or the P, uh, P type region where the unknown is attached. And you connect the positive terminal of your voltage source to once the cathode. Um, if you do that, your diode will operate in reverse bias and you will have 
very small amount of current for practical purposes, we consider it to be negligible. And so we, for practical purposes, we would uh, say that no current flows under reverse bias mode. However, when you look at the IV curve to the extreme uh, right, uh, what you are seeing is a, as you increase the reverse voltage, the, 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 the axis, the, the horizontal axis pointing to the left, as you increase the as you increase the reverse voltage, very little reverse current um, uh, occurs. Almost, it's very little, it's very close to zero reverse current that happens. Until you reach a point where now suddenly the reverse current starts increases drastically. And that point where the reverse current increases drastically, the point labeled the knee is referred as reverse breakdown voltage. So um, it's a very huge reverse voltage that is required to ensure that uh, the diode is, is, is now um, in the reverse bias and uh, uh, current is flowing through its very um, huge voltage. And for, for most diodes, you don't want to operate your diode at that point, near that point, because once current, once you have a lot of car, uh, reverse current flowing through the diode, you are likely to damage that diode. So you don't want to get to that point um, because the diode is likely to get damaged because as that current is flowing, uh, it generates a lot of heat in the device um, because what is happening is it, electrons are moving at very high spins colliding with other um, atoms and uh, knocking off um, additional um, electrons which continue that chain of knocking other uh, electrons in the atoms. And, and so that's how um, uh, that reverse uh, uh, current, that enormous reverse current past the breakdown voltage, reverse breakdown voltage happens. And so there are some diodes which are uh, manufactured to exploit that, um, that, that, that phenomenon. But for ordinary diodes like uh, rectifier diodes, you don't want to get it to that point. It's, it's usually a high value of reverse voltage that would uh, take a uh, rectifier diode to re um, reverse breakdown. And you don't want to get there. Um, again, uh, we would want to ask ourselves, is there an effect of, um, that does reverse bias cause an effect on the depletion region? And uh, it turns out, yes, um, if you um, bias, you are dying in the reverse bias mode, the, the depletion region windens, it, it windens. And why does it do so? Um, you see the positive terminal of the voltage source is towards um, the N region and the negative terminal is towards the P region. So what happens to the changes? Uh, the positive terminal will attract the free electrons in the N region towards it. So it will move towards the cathode and um, also the and and also even the O's will move towards um, will move towards the um, the negative terminal, uh, which is at the which is at the anode, and and so the net effect is the widening of the depletion region where the change carriers migrate 
further away from the PN junction. Now, um, the complete current voltage curve of a diode is as shown. So it has the, the two signs, the positive quadrant and the negative quadrant. Um, the positive quadrant shows you the behavior of the diode, that is in terms of the forward voltage and forward current. And uh, the other quadrant, the fourth quadrant, shows you the behavior of uh, the reverse current and reverse voltage. So that's what we call the complete IV curve of a diode. Now, um, we have got an, a worked example. And um, this question is asking us to determine the forward voltage and the forward current of the diode in the figure below. Also find the voltage across the limiting resistor. Determine the reverse voltage and reverse current for the diode in figure B. So now we have two figures. One in one figure, the diode is uh, forward biased. And uh, in the next figure, the diode is uh, reverse biased. Um, so uh, we are asked to uh, determine uh, those parameters. So let's start with the forward voltage. Now, um, if we go, uh, if we go to back to a few slides here, uh, in fact, this is the slide we are looking for. We said when a diode is forward biased, the voltage across it um, is equal to what we referred to as the barrier potential or potential barrier. And um, for most uh, diodes, that value is around 0 0.7. For some diode is 0 0.6, for some is 0 0.7. There are some diodes with even um, a forward voltage value of um, close to one volt, but it revolves around that value. Um, so, so, and that is the forward voltage. Um, that that is the forward voltage of the diode. So, in this question. Um, the forward voltage is 0 0.7, and it is determined by the manufacturer. Um, uh, there isn't much calculation uh, you need to do. You just need to look at the data sheet, and you see the forward voltage of the diode. The next thing we asked for is uh, the forward current. Now, there you invoke Ohm's law, and uh, Ohm's law will tell you uh, current. So, so you want to find current flowing through the that resistor. And uh, that is the same current that will flow through the diode. And um, how do you find that current? You want first to get the voltage across the resistor so that you divide that voltage across the resistor by the value of the resistor um that is uh, there which is 1.0 kilo ohms so the voltage across the resistor is um given by uh, getting the difference between the supply voltage or the v bias which is 10 volts you subtract uh, the, the 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 voltage drop across the resistor the diode you subtract the voltage drop across the diode to get the voltage drop across the resistor. Then divide that by the, by the resistor value. And that gives you um, the current. It gives you the current flowing through the resistor, which is the same as the current flowing through the diode. The next thing you are asked for is the voltage, is the voltage across the, the resistor. 
Uh, the voltage across the resistor can be worked out uh, in two ways. You can just, because uh, you can just subtract 10 volts, this 10 volts from the voltage drop here, because it means at this point, see where I'm putting the cursor. At this point, the voltage potential there is 0 0.7. That is what you need to drop uh, so that to, to ground. So up to here you have 0 0.7, but here you have 10. So what is the difference? The, that, that's what we call the voltage drop. How much voltage is dropped here? Because uh, we have 0 0.7 here. We have 0 0.7 here and we have 10 here. So the rest has to be dropped across the resistor. So if you say 10 minus 0 0.7, which is here, um, then you get zero, uh, you get 9.3 volts. So that is one way of getting the voltage drop across this resistor. Another way of getting uh, the voltage drop across this resistor is to just uh, use the ohm's uh, roll. Uh, sorry, yes, and uh, you say, what is the current flowing through the resistor and what is the resistance of um, this resistor, then multiply the two. And that is what has been done here. The forward current times the forward times the, the, the value of the resistor. And you get this value. But remember, you could have gotten the same value by subtracting this minus 0 0.7 that is here to get what is being dropped at this point. So the, we look at part B of that question where you, we are asked for to, to determine the reverse voltage and reverse current for the diode in figure B. Now, uh, usually we are interested in uh, what we call the practical diode model where uh, we assume in a reverse bias, no current is flowing. So the reverse current is zero, okay? The reverse current is zero. Um, and uh, what is the reverse voltage? Um, what is the reverse voltage? If, if you measured the voltage across this diode here, what would you um, uh, observe? Most students would tell you it is zero, which is the wrong answer. It is actually 10, it is actually 10. Because you are not dropping anything. Uh, you are not dropping anything because the current is zero. When current is not flowing, you don't drop any voltage. So this voltage 10 here is what appears here. So the value is 10. And uh, the the, the, the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across this resistor is zero. Why? Because there is no current flowing, so you are not dropping any voltage here. You drop a voltage across a resistor when some current is flowing. And since no current is flowing, if you came with a multi, uh, voltmeter or a multimeter to measure, uh, the, current, the voltage, you will realize that in reverse bias, when the diode is like this, then uh, zero um, current is flowing. Okay, now we look at one application of um, diodes, which is rectification. What is rectification? Rectification is the process of converting AC voltage and current to DC voltage and current. Um, and that process is implemented by electronic circuits known as rectifiers. Um, and at the art of rectifiers are diodes. Diodes are the key, um, the key uh, components in uh, rectifier circuits. They are the ones which actually perform rectification. Um, so um, the diagram below 
the diagram there shows um, the AC voltage and um, you need to note that for different countries, the value of AC voltage is different. In Kenya, for example, the RMS voltage value for the AC uh, voltage we get from the mains is 250 volts and it oscillates at a frequency of 50 hertz. In US, uh, you get that voltage at 120 volts RMS and oscillating at a frequency of 60. Um, the point to note is that AC voltage is a voltage that has got that changes changes its polarity with time. At certain instances of time, it has positive polarity. At other instances of time, it has negative polarity. And that is what makes it called AC. It's what uh, makes it um, um, uh, AC in nature. Um, in terms of current, um, what happens is current at some point is flowing in one direction. And at another instance of time, it is flowing in opposite direction. So it alternates between forward direction and negative uh, direction in time, that is the current. But voltage, what changes is the polarity. At some point, it's, you have positive value of voltage, at other times you have negative value of voltage. So it's a dual polarity kind of a voltage. Uh, voltage. However, DC, DC voltage, it is unipolarity or it has got only one polarity. It is either positive or negative, but not both. So DC is single polarity, AC is dual polarity in time. Um, something else I need to note about AC is that um, it can be constant such that it doesn't fluctuate with the time all it could be fluctuating in time, but in only having only one polarity. And that polarity could be positive as shown in those two figures, or it could also be negative, but only one polarity, only negative. Still that qualifies to be uh, DC, but not two polarities at the same time, or not, not, not two polarities. So, you only need to have one polarity. So, so that's what makes uh, DC. Um, a point to note is that uh, electrifier circuits are very common in most electronic devices. Why? Because most electronic devices require DC power to operate them. Um, but you find that the kind of power you get at the mains uh, is AC. That's the, the power that we receive from the mains electricity. And so for you to operate these uh, electronic devices, which are DC powered, you need that um, uh, section of the circuit that will now convert AC from the mains to DC that is required to power the electronics. So they are very common in most electronic circuits, including um, um, changing modules for phones, uh, changing modules for laptops. Uh, most electronic equipment will have a section inside that is dedicated for electrification. Very few would operate without electrification. Um, this diagram actually shows you a complete um, electronic power supply. And it shows you from the mains, you get your mains. And uh, the next 
the first thing you want to do is uh, to, or the first thing you want to have in your power supply is a transformer. And uh, what does a transformer do? A transformer plays two main uh, roles. One, it steps down or steps up. Mostly in electronic circuits, we want uh, step down transformers to step down the main electricity from 120 volts or 250 volts to something uh, smaller, like 12 volts or 24 volts. Um, before you do the rectification. So one purpose of electrifier is uh, stepping down the voltage, but uh, remember there are transformers which uh, also step up depending on the need. But the next role or the other role of the transformer is to isolate the mains from the rest of the sections of the electronics in your device. Remember the mains is uh, quite a sanders. Um, it can give someone a terrible shock. And so you want to isolate the mains uh, from the rest of the circuit of your equipment and uh, a transformer Actually, by the <laughs> nature of the construction of the transformer, um, you have what we call <coughs> electromagnetic induction between the primary coil and the secondary coil. And so there isn't a direct link between the primary, which is now the mains, and the secondary, which is the output of the, of the transformer. So that isolation kind of is a safety um, uh, is for safety uh, reasons, because when you isolate um, the rest of the circuit from um, the mains, it means the risk of having a dangerous um, shock, which can lead to electro, electro, electrocution is reduced. Now, um, uh, let's still go to rectification. Uh, what you are seeing uh, as the output of the rectifier are two voltage waveforms. Those two voltage waveforms, eh, which are the output of the rectifier, are DC in nature, regardless of the fact that they are oscillating. They are DC in nature. Why? Because they have a single polarity. All of them are positive polarity. However, you can see they are of two different types. Uh, in fact, uh, that tells you there are two types, two broad types of uh, rectifiers, which we call one is half wave rectifiers and the other one is full wave rectifiers. So, what we want to look at this point is half wave rectification, which is achieved by a circuit called half wave rectifier. And the two diagrams there give you um, the circuit diagram of, uh, or the schematic diagram of a half wave rectifier. And what you need to realize there is that uh, a half wave rectifier is made of a single diode. You only need a single diode to implement a half wave rectifier. Um, what is shown here is your AC source, which would be your mains electricity. And um, one terminal, pass it through the diode, the other terminal, just loop it, sorry loop it this other side to the round. The round is the appliance that you want to power. So the rectifier is basically this, this section. And this is an, an equivalent way of drawing this circuit. And uh, we are going to prefer this um, 
the, the, this uh, manner of drawing the schematic diagram where we show that this point, point A and point B, you see they are electrically same point in terms of electrical potential. And it also turns out, this is um, the ROAS in terms of potential, this is what we call ground. You know, we start um, referencing um, electrical potential from the zero value. And that zero value is what we call um, the ground. So this at this point, eh, which is the one the ground uh, terminal indicated here, is assumed to be the 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 the, the, um, the zero voltage potential. That is where we start um, kind of uh, comparing our voltage potential from. That is our reference point. You can have positive potential with respect to that point, or you can have negative electrical potential with respect to that point. That is your reference point. That's your reference point as far as the voltages is concerned. At that point, that is the point you call zero volt. That's the point you call zero point. And that point is what we call the ground. So instead of now drawing it this way, you can just show with this simple that this point is ground and also this point is ground so those are two equivalent ways but this 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 is most preferred so um the next thing you want to do is um, um stand the operation of um, a half wave rectifier and um, you do that by uh, comparing what happens when you supply an input voltage across the diode. And remember AC, AC voltage has got two um, portions of uh, the wave. There is the positive portion and the negative portion to make a complete cycle. Now, we want to consider what happens during the positive half cycle. We call it positive half cycle. The section that is uh, shown in this region is the positive half cycle. What happens to the diode? Um, during the positive half cycle, this side becomes positive or the anode side of the diode becomes positive compared to the cathode side of the diode. And when that happens, the diode is forward biased. And therefore current can flow from the voltage source to the road. This is the road. And once current flows through the road, a voltage is developed across the road resistor. So this is the voltage that is developed when current flows through the road, so as shown. So what we are saying is during the positive half cycle, um, the diode is forward biased because the, the anode is more positive than the cathode. And therefore current flows through the diode to the road resistor and uh, the road resistor develops a voltage across it. During the negative half cycle, this section, what happens is the anode of the diode becomes more negative than the cathode. Because um, this, the, the, this point, actually you can see the polarities have, 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 um, have uh, switched. It was positive now, it is negative. So, and this side is, the ground is more positive than this side. So what happens, that makes the anode more negative than the cathode. And that has the effect of reverse biasing the diode. And when a, a diode is reverse biased for practical reasons, we say no current is flowing. So no, no current flows through that uh, section 
that 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 uh, period of time. So, um, in a sense, what you end up with is a voting waveform that looks like this. Uh, this is what happened during the positive valve cycle. This is what happens when uh, the negative valve cycle is executed. This is what happens during the positive valve cycle. This is what happens during the negative valve cycle. In other words, during the negative valve cycle, there is no voltage that is developed across the road. There is no voltage developed across the road. But during the positive cycle, a voltage is developed across the road. So that's, that's the picture uh, that is happening. Um, now, uh, it's good to analyze that voltage so that uh, we can, it, that analysis can help us do some calculations. Now, one of the, the things you might be interested in is asking yourself, what is the peak output voltage of an of half wave rectifier, peak output voltage, in other words, this, this voltage at the maximum point, eh? what is its value? Of course, in regard to the peak input voltage, in regard to the peak input voltage, supposing you knew the value here, if for example, I told you the value of the voltage here is um, 20 volts, and I told you, uh, determine the value of the peak here. Uh, would you be able to tell? It's not difficult because what we are saying is when a diode is forward biased, a voltage drop of 0 0.7 volts uh, happens or a diode drops 0 0.7 so that if you want 20, you will drop this amount. So what remains is what appears here. And this is where we are interested in. So the peak output voltage, this, this parameter here, the peak output voltage is given by the peak input voltage, this one, less one diode drop, which is 0. 7 volts, which is 0 0.7 volt. And that 0 0.7 is because that is the voltage you drop across this diode. Okay. Another uh, parameter of interest is, um, is uh, the average output voltage of a half wave rectifier. And it is computed by taking the peak output voltage the peak output voltage and dividing it by pi. Now, one thing I want you to note is that when does a complete oscillation, um, I mean, wh what portion of the waveform makes a complete oscillation uh, in the case of this diagram shown? The, a complete oscillation, if we start from this point, um, so this is one oscillation all the way, um, we, we don't stop at this point. Most, most would say one complete oscillation stops at this point. That's not the case. The one complete oscillation stops at this point. So that a new cycle now starts like that and moves up to a point where the next cycle would be starting. So a complete oscillation uh, starts from here and stops here. Um, so, um, but, uh, so, so, so the average, the average voltage would actually be the area of this portion, the area of this portion, but this portion is, uh, is, is from here to here, which is actually pi radians, if you are to measure it in degrees, uh, the entire cycle is, um, two pi radians. But since we have a voltage only in the positive valve cycle, that's why we are saying the peak divided by pi. This is a formula that 
is obtained after some uh, mathematical computation. After you find the area of this curve using some um, some some uh, calculus uh, techniques. But the most important thing is to note the, the result. Um, there is also another parameter we call peak inverse voltage of a diode. What is the peak inverse voltage of a diode? It is the reverse, it's the voltage that the, the, is, the, is, the, is the maximum reverse voltage that a diode um, is, 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 is operated with. The maximum reverse voltage a diode is operated with is what we call the peak inverse voltage. Um, so it's important because diodes have a parameter or a rating called peak inverse voltage rating. You, want, you don't, what, what you don't want to do is um, exceed the peak inverse voltage of a, the peak inverse voltage rating of a diode. So it's good to know what is the maximum reverse voltage um, the diode is operating with. Eh? And ask yourself, is it within the, 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 the manufacturer rating? Because if it is, it is, um, if it is the peak inverse voltage is more than the rate and value, then you, you are likely to damage that diode. And it's not, it comes from this concept we discussed here, where we sent, see this point, we sent, you have to make sure that you don't reverse your diode, reverse bias your diode to a reverse voltage, to a reverse voltage that would exist, would exceed the breakdown voltage. So you would, you would view um, peak inverse uh, voltage as the breakdown. Uh, the, so it's the reverse voltage, is the maximum reverse voltage, but peak inverse voltage rating is more or less this volume because you don't want to pass, um, you don't want your diode to pass this volume. Okay, so that is peak inverse voltage and we have seen is the maximum reverse voltage that in diode is operated. Um, in case of, um, in case of uh, AC voltage um, is the max, is the peak, is the maximum or the peak reverse voltage that in diode is operated with. Now, um, a transformer is a very important uh, component in electrification. We saw that the first thing we want to do when we are doing, um, when we are designing a power supply is introduce a transformer for two good reasons. One is electrical isolation to isolate the mains from the rest of the circuit. So that's what we call electrical isolation. And that is done for safety uh, reasons um, to prevent the risk of um, an asunder or a fatal um, a shock, electrical shock in case of an accident. Uh, but number two is to step down um, your uh, input voltage to a manageable level. Um, now, a, a transformer has an equation that uh, tells you um, what to get uh, uh, at the secondary uh, terminals in terms of voltage for what you supply in the primary section. 
and that is determined by what we call the turn ratio. Uh, the turn ratio is given by the number of turns in the primary cell, a uh, coil, uh, to the number of turns in the sec secondary coil. It can also be obtained by getting the ratio of primary voltage to the secondary voltage. That will give you the turn ratio. And so if you want to, to get the secondary voltage, the output voltage of the transformer, all you need to do is multiply the turn ratio with the primary voltage, okay? Now, if you incorporate a transformer in the half wave rectifier um, and you want to calculate the peak output voltage of the rectifier, you just need to ask yourself, do you know what is the peak secondary voltage, the peak secondary voltage of the transformer? If you know it, you only need to subtract one diode drop from that value and you get the peak output voltage. Um, next, we look at the full wave trans, sorry, full wave rectifier. And now we need to distinguish between a full wave rectifier and a half wave rectifier. Um, so if you look at the output waveforms, this is the output waveform for the full wave rectifier, whereas this is the output waveform for a half wave rectifier. The difference is clear that during a complete cycle of the input voltage, you know a complete cycle starts from this point, goes to the positive maximum, then to zero, then post uh, maximum negative, then to zero. So during that cycle, uh, what happens is the full wave rectifier makes two cycles. In one input cycle, during one input cycle, the full wave rectifier will make two cycles, output cycles. Whereas the half wave rectifier will only make one cycle, one cycle from here to here. When it goes negative, nothing happens. It becomes zero, then it waits for the next cycle. But here, during the, the positive half cycle, you have this cycle. And during the negative half cycle, you have this other cycle. The point to note is in the case of a full wave rectifier, the output has only one polarity, but uh, what what happens is the number of cycles, and what should and that should tell you the frequency of oscillations doubles. There's an oscillation in this DC signal. Most people think DC signal doesn't have oscillations, but uh, well in the sense that um, you are uh, uh, trying to rectify so that you have only one, one polarity, one polarity, but it has oscillations. So, so the frequency of these oscillations doubles uh, with respect to the frequency of the input. And that is a key point to note because subsequently you will need, if you are given the frequency of the input, and you are asked for the frequency of the output for the full wave, you need to double the frequency. But for the half wave, the frequency of the input is the same as the frequency of the output. So that's, that distinction needs to come out. And uh, it turns out the average voltage, the average voltage for a um, full wave rectifier is given by this formula. Now note this formula, two, VP, that is twice peak voltage of the of the rectifier. This, this, uh, this, is, this is the point where we are calling the peak voltage. So the average voltage is two 
two times the peak voltage divided by pi. Which the, what that tells you, it is double, this double compared to the average for this. If you can remember, uh, this was the average for the half wave electrif electrification. There's no two here. So, so for full wave, it doubles, it's kind of doubles, the average doubles. So, and that is one advantage, that's one advantage of uh, full wave rectification compared to, to half wave rectification because the signal strength doubles, the signal strength doubles. And that tells you the power doubles, of course, the power of the signal doubles. Now, how do you implement um, full wave rectification? Um, there are two circuits used to achieve full wave rectification. One is what we call center tapped full wave rectification. And the schematic diagram is shown. Um, so this is the, the, the schematic diagram of a center tapped full wave rectification. And uh, what you need to note is how many diodes? There are two diodes used. In the half wave rectification, there were only one diode. Here there are two. And also you make use of a transformer. You make use of a transformer. And this transformer is referred to as center tapped transformer. This transformer is referred to a center tapped transformer. Um, at the output of the transformer, at the output of the transformer, you have three terminals. You have three terminals. Um, you have this terminal, which we call the center tap, which is grounded, the center tap, which is grounded, and you have this terminal and this terminal. So, um, I think this diagram here helps to uh, illustrate the center tap transformer. It shows you the primary section of the transformer and the secondary section of the transformer. This is the center tap terminal, uh, which is grounded. And uh, what you see is the voltage between the center tap and this line, line one, eh? And uh, you can also have a voltage between the center tap and line, line two. Now the relationship is, is usually, um, um, if, 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 if uh, you get at any, if at any given point of time, this voltage VA is, negative in polarity to Vb. So that if this is positive, this is negative in any given time. And remember, if you apply an AC here, what you will get here is still AC, only that it is stepped down. And AC, if at one point this is positive, the next time it will be negative. So, but if it were positive at that given instance, this will be negative. Then when this changes to positive, this will change to negative. And uh, something else you need to note about center tapped transformer is that um, if you get the, 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 the voltage from this point, if you, the voltage from this point to this point is the, is the sum of this voltage and this voltage without considering the polarities. Of course, if you consider the polarity, it will cancel because the two are equal and opposite. This and this is equal and opposite. So if you, so you don't consider the polarity, you, if you want to get the total voltage, you just add the magnitude of A and the magnitude of VB to get V total. So that's the, the center tapped transformer, the schematic diagram. And this is how it looks like, this is how it looks like. Um, 
This is the input side, of course, two terminals for the input where you apply your AC signal. And these are the outputs. This is the center tap, and these are the two other terminals. And uh, you can see from the center tap to this terminal is store of votes for this particular transformer. But from this terminal to this terminal is 24 volts. So it's like double because it's 12 of this side, 12 of this side. Only that this 12 of if is positive at some point, this 12 of is negative at some other point. Um, so the next thing you want to do is understand how a center tapped full wave rectifier operates. And again, um, you use uh, the same approach you used for half wave rectifier. Ask yourself what happens during the positive half cycle of the input voltage. Um, during the positive half cycle of the input voltage, what happens is at the secondary terminal, of course, a voltage is induced through electromagnetic induction. Eh? Um, and it is induced such that this terminal, the terminal A, if I call it terminal A, is more positive relative to terminal B. Okay. So this end is more positive than this end. What that means is uh, the anode of diode D1, eh? you know, you are, we have two diodes, D1 and D2. So the anode of D1 will be more positive than the cathode of D1 because the cathode of D1 is linked to this side. So it becomes negative and uh, anode positive. And that makes the that makes the diode forward biased. And so current flows from the transformer through the diode um, that way. So let's look at what happens to this diode. So that's to know which once the current reaches here and does it go this way or does it go this way? So what happens to this diode? Now look, at the same time instance, this end is negative. Um, because it is negative, it makes the anode of D2 negative um, in regard to the cathode, because the cathode is closer, or is more positive due to this uh, side. So, what that does is reverse bias this diode. So this diode is reverse bias. Remember, reverse bias means current is not flowing through it. So what happens is we send current flows this side through D1. It can't go this side because it's reverse biased. So it goes through the road, it goes through the road and it develops a voltage across the road, which looks like that. Now, during the negative half cycle, during the negative half cycle, what happens? Um, terminal A becomes negative, terminal B becomes positive. What that does is it makes diode D1 reverse biased. Why? Because the anode is more negative than the cathode and it makes D2 a fund biased because the anode is more positive than the cathode. And, and therefore now current flows from the transformer through D2 to the road. Now, something to note, the direction of current through the road, both for both cases, when the input cycle was positive, was, was executing positive half cycle, and when it was executing negative half cycle, those current directions are the same. So what you will end up with is unidirectional output voltage. 
voltage which is in the same of the same polarity or current which is flowing through the road in the same direction. So, and that is like now we say rectification has been achieved. Why? Because the output voltage is of the same polarity and the current is flowing through the road in the same direction. It's not like in one time it is flowing up once, in the other time it's flowing down once. So, so that's how rectification happens. And uh, something else you want to ask is, uh, what is the output voltage in, in the case of this? Um, what is the output voltage in the case of um, the, the, the center tapped rectifier? It's given by this formula. It is half the secondary voltage minus one diode drop. And why half is because remember you are you are voting you are considering your voting with respect to the center tab, um, but the secondary voting is actually from this terminal to terminal B, but since one half is from is from zero to the positive, then back, and then the other half is from zero to the negative, so that's why the voltage that is passing through this diode is half the total secondary voltage. And uh, the, it's one diode drop. It's one diode drop, uh, that is the, the output voltage. So, so the output voltage is half the secondary voltage minus one diode drop. Um, the peak inverse voltage, which is the maximum reverse voltage uh, across the diode, the maximum reverse voltage across the diode is the peak output voltage plus one diode drop. The way you see it is, um, the, way, the way you see it is um, here, the output voltage is VP, it's VP, the output, the peak output voltage. Um, but this other sign, it is uh, actually the secondary voltage. Now, if you consider a reverse biased uh, diode like this, at this sign, uh, you have you have negative, negative V secondary over two. And at this side, you have a V peak. If you do the substitution, eh, you arrive at this uh, formula. The next uh, rectifier circuit, full wave rectifier circuit is what we call the bridge rectifier. And the bridge rectifier is made up of four diodes, which are connected back to back. And the circuit there shows the schematic diagram of a full wave bridge rectifier. How does it operate? So again, we take the approach of what happens during the positive half cycle of the input voltage. What happens is um, at the secondary, you develop, you, you develop a voltage or uh, a voltage is induced such that uh, at this point it is positive and at this point is negative. And uh, that being the case, if you look, you'll see this diode will be forward biased. And uh, also this diode will be forward biased. Um, <laughs> now, uh, reason being, eh? reason being that uh, cathode will be negative compared to ground. Eh? So this diode and this diode are forward biased. And so you have a current flowing from ground through D2 uh, to the transformer, to D1 to the road resistor. 
and back to the ground, basically back to this point. Okay. So what we are saying is uh, two diodes are forward biased, but two other diodes are reverse biased. D3 and D4 are reverse biased. And uh, the reason why is simple. You can see if this is positive and uh, immediately what you get from this terminal, you get the cathode, then clearly this diode will be reverse biased. Um, if you have a negative now, and uh, what you get here uh, next is the anode of a diode, then also this diode is going to be reverse biased. So these two get reverse bias, these two get forward bias, current flows through the transformer to D1 to the road, uh, from the road. Note from here, this is ground. From here, it goes to this other ground, the same point, then to D2, then back to the transformer. That's what happens during the positive half cycle of the input voltage. During the negative half cycle of the input voltage, what happens now? Um, what happens is uh, the polarities, the induced polarities changes. Uh, and uh, with the change of induced polarity at the secondary, you have now to ask yourself which two diodes become positive, uh, or become forward biased, and which diodes become reverse biased. And if you look, let's say at this terminal now it's negative, we can go like this. Eh? A negative polarity or a negative voltage going direct to the anode is going to make that diode reverse biased. However, a negative polarity going direct to the cathode is likely to make this diode forward bias. So that way you can see this will be reverse bias, this will be forward biased. Let's look at this part. This is positive. This is a positive polarity. Um, so from there, we meet an anode. So positive uh, polarity meets an anode, anode that is going to make this diode. Uh, forward biased, but the same positive term in, uh, polarity uh, goes to the cathode of this diode, it's going to make this diode reverse bias. So this diode D3 and D4 becomes uh, forward biased and uh, D1 and D2 becomes a reverse bias. Therefore, how does current flow from the transformer through D4 to the, remember it can't go this way because this is reverse bias, to the road, from the road to the ground, again from the ground all the way to D3, back to the transformer. And a voltage again is developed across the round resistor like this. And this voltage is the same polarity as this voltage. So we have achieved rectification. Again, you can see the direction of flow of current in the two half cycles, alternating half cycles, the direction of current through the road is the same. So again, rectification has been achieved. Some mathematics. What is the peak output voltage of the rectifier? It is the peak secondary voltage minus 1.4 volts. That 1.4 volts is equivalent to two diode drops because at any given point, two diodes are forward biased, which drops a voltage of 1.4 volts. So if you want to calculate the peak output voltage, you just need to know what is the peak secondary voltage and subtract 1.4 volts. Peak inverse voltage, the maximum reverse voltage across the diode. It is equal to the peak output voltage plus 0.7 volts. 
And the way I, I, I look at this, at this point, we have peak output voltage, and which diode is, uh, which diode is uh, reverse biased? It is this one. In this case, it is this one. So it must be that at this point, eh, at this point, uh, we have, um, it, it, it is a zero point, it, it must be 0 0.7 volts above this point. That's the peak inverse voltage. Um, the, there's a worked example there. I will leave uh, that to you to uh, work it out. And so that we can uh, look at the power surprise uh, filtering, filtering uh, in the power supply. Now, one thing that is a little bit annoying with the rectifiers is this um, pulsating nature of the output voltage. What we would have wanted is to have a constant output voltage, one which is not fluctuating. And so um, what do we do to remove the amount of fluctuations? What we do is we incorporate a filter circuit. We incorporate a filter circuit. So when we incorporate a filter circuit, uh, the output voltage looks like this. It, yes, it has, got, it has got some fluctuations, but it is not as intense as when there was no filtering. So filtering serves the purpose of, um, serves the purpose of um, trying to reduce the, 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 the ripples or trying to smooth the output voltage of the rectifier. It is smoothens the output voltage of the rectifier. How is it implemented? A simple uh, filter circuit is implemented by incorporating a capacitor across the output of the rectifier. By incorporating a capacitor across the output of the rectifier, you manage to have uh, some filtering action. And uh, what that does is uh, kind of smoothen the output voltage. Um, and its operation can be seen by uh, standing what happens in the second diagram, whereby this side we are uh, showing the, the input voltage that is rising from zero to almost the peak. And what that happens is uh, it forms bias this diode so that current flows through the capacitor and changes the capacitor to a voltage uh, equal to the peak input voltage less one diode drop because of this diode drop. So that's so so from from this point to this point the capacitor is changing and uh, now from this point down up to this point uh, the capacitor starts in discharging but it discharges in a slow rate compared to the rate at which the input waveform is dropping so the output of the capacitors, it discharges through the road. Remember the capacitor is discharging through the road. So it discharges at a slower rate. So that by the time the input voltage peaks from this point, it kind of replenishes the capacitor voltage. It makes the capacitor to recharge. Remember it and um, lost some charge as it was recharging. So now this portion, this portion uh, kind of um, uh, uh, changes the capacitor to 
furuchanje and the cycle kind of continues so eventually you end up with um, a waveform that looks like this so if you compare without the filtering section this is half wave this is full wave this is half wave with a filter the, the, the it's kind of a smoother compared to this this is better dc this is better dc than this and this for the full wave rectification now you get a, a voltage which looks like this so it's kind of trying to smoothen and make it across to constant voltage um something else i think i need to emphasize i had said it uh, earlier this is the output voltage of a half wave rectifier and the frequency of the output <laughs> the frequency of the output is equal to the frequency of the input voltage for full wave rectifier the frequency of the output is two times the frequency of the input voltage yeah. Uh, this fracture when 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 you put the filter when you put a filter in the rectifier those fluctuations we call them ripples still you don't smoothen it completely you still have some fluctuations and those fluctuations we call them ripples um and so uh, this diagram kind of helps us illustrate different aspects of the repose. So this is a full wave rectifier output voltage, and it is showing the repose. Now, from the zero to this point here, this is what we refer to as the DC voltage of the rectifier. See, then the DC voltage. And um, from here to here, this is what we refer to as the uh, peak peak um, uh, rectified voltage. The peak rectified voltage. Um, then this difference between the maximum and the minimum of the rectified voltage, we call it peak to peak repo voltage peak to peak repo voltage okay and using those parameters we can uh, define or we can calculate the amount of peak to peak repo voltage which is equal to one over the frequency of the signal and remember this frequency if we are dealing with the um, full wave rectifier, it should be twice the frequency of the input voltage or and, and times the resistance of the road, times the resistance of the road, times the capacitance. Capacitance is an, uh, a property of the capacitor. All that multiplied by the peak rectified voltage all that multiplied by the peak rectified voltage. So that gives you this voltage we are calling peak to peak repo voltage. That gives you that. If you wanted to know what is the DC voltage, if you wanted to know what is the DC voltage, you would use this formula. Again, uh, DC voltage is approximately equal to one minus one over two a frequency resistor capacitance multiplied by peak rectified voltage. And then we have something we call a repo factor, this, this parameter here. Repo factor is the ratio of peak to peak ratio voltage to the DC voltage. Okay. And with that, we come to the end of um, this lecture too. Thank you very much. Um, for listening. Um, I will be posting the assignment uh, for this um, uh, lesson in the running management system. So uh, check that. Thank you.